president and founder of Monte FGCC Bible College and Theological Seminary in this country and literally abroad. I pastor the full Gospel Christian Church at 5901. Dr. Martin Luther King at Home Avenue, three blocks north of Pearson Road. We're going to pray before we teach. Father, we thank you. Thank you for your love and kind and tender mercy. Thank you for blessing us last Tuesday with yes, yes. a question that went into our deep theology. Yes. And we came out with this simple truth. God is still God. Jesus still saved. I'm still saved. Filled with the Holy Ghost. Yes, Our subject today is a new beginning. Subsubject, there's life within. A new beginning. There's life within, and we're going to begin to read in Acts 20. We're going to start at the seventh verse, where this young man was listening to Paul that preached all night, sitting on the third story window, <coughs> fell out and died, and Paul came down and said, he ain't dead. I ain't through yet. Get up. So Acts 20 and 7. And upon the first day of the week when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul preached unto them, ready to depart on the morrow, and continued his speech until midnight. And while we get this 30 minutes Bible study stuff, and you go home and watch television until time to go to work the next morning. Our subject is a new beginning. That's life within. We're in Acts 20. That's life within. We're in Acts 20, start at 7 verse. And upon the first day of the week when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul preached unto them, ready to part unto Mara, and continued his speech until midnight. And there were many lights in the upper chambers where they were gathered together. And there sat in a window a certain young man named Ethicus, being fallen to a deep sleep. Oh, you better not go to sleep in church. <laughs> being fallen to sleep into a deep sleep. And as Paul was long preaching, as Pastor Wheeler, he sunk down with sleep. And when he sunk down with sleep, he fell down from the third loft and was taken up dead. On the third, sitting in the window on the third floor and went to sleep. Have mercy. And Paul went down and fell on him and embraced that dead man. And said, trouble not yourself, for his life is in him. Trouble not yourself, because his life is in him. So I got that subject, a new beginning. This fellow died. He was dead. Amen. Fell out of the window in church and killed himself. Paul went down. Paul, some kind of fellow, man. Some kind of fellow. Look what he did to that dead man in Acts 20 and 10. He embraced him. Now, how are you going to embrace a dead man? Well, this is Paul, brother, working under the power of the other Holy Ghost. And then he said, don't worry, for his life is in him. Our subject is a new beginning. There's life within. Go to Isaiah 40 and let's enjoy ourselves. Isaiah 40.
Well, let's step off at Acts. Step off at Acts 3. Acts 3. And we're going to read this. Now you listen to me. This is what keeps the church out of trouble. Amen. Seeing the word of God like it is. Reading it like it's written and living it. That keeps the church out of trouble. I was watching television saying last night for five, five minutes I found to cut it off and cut the cowboys on because the cowboys make it more sense than the preacher. He had everybody dressed in gray suits with so-and-so ties and gray shoes and he's speaking and said this is coming from God and I'm thinking you need to be preaching. You, you're paying a big dollar for this time and you using it to entertain and all of them look alike. It's all right to wear the same kind of suit, but you ought to be talking about the same kind of God one of these days. And you couldn't get near that church. That was a great big church. And the people came because the pastor wasn't teaching nothing. Whenever you want to thin out a congregation and make it a church, start reading. Amen. Nothing but the word of God. You can't be wrong. I said, you can't be wrong when you read and live what you read. Amen. Because if you live what you read, you're going to experience who wrote it. Amen. Amen. You just can't keep reading this book and never meet Jesus. Jesus is going to visit you when you read this book. I had $2,600 worth of bills to pay today. Just before I woke up this morning, the man came into my room and gave me a fist full of money. This is a dream, a vision. So I gathered up all the bills and who I'm going to pay how much. And I went down to the courthouse down there. And you know why you pay your water bills over there? I had nine of them bills, and I had itemized them. And it come up to $3,000. When that lady got on the computer, this is paid. That one is paid. I said, I'm going to praise you right here. So don't do it. It only cost me $422. Over 3000 I paid them and forgot I had paid them. So I went to the bank and drew out some no-go money. And I'm going to put it back in there for my wife see it, because it'll go. <laughs> and I, I paid all them bills. And you know, when you want to shout it, the Holy Ghost don't care where you make you shout at. Amen. So I'm standing at that lady. This one is paid. This one is paid. And I said, Holy J, Holy Ghost. <laughs> A whole line of people behind me. I went out of my car and turned the radio on and rolled the window. <laughs> Lord, I thank you. It, handful of money. Nothing to do with it but put it back in the bank where it came from. Amen. Amen. So I paid the bills and forgot I had paid them. Now Jesus paid the bill. Don't forget he paid it. Because you act like you still owe it. Are oh, y'all listening to me? Yeah. I've been happy. Oh, I ain't slept a wig, man. <laughs> I laid out, boy. I mean, come on, praise it. God. Now, it, to you, that ain't a whole lot of money. But hey, man. I went there with a fist full of money. I left there with a fist full of money. And the lady said, I paid that last week. This thing is paid. I'm talking about five and six hundred dollars with a bill for this and five hundred and six hundred. And you know, I'm trying to thank you. Thank you. <laughs> oh, when I got out of that car! <laughs> hey! Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. See, 
God can do so many good things for you. So you just can't remember all of that stuff. Amen. You know. Now I don't never forget that I'm saved. I know who paid that debt. But this was my debt here. And I got home. I'm going to put that money in the bank tomorrow. Because my wife is flying to Atlanta Thursday. He that keep money must be wise. As a misquote. <laughs> As a misquote. We're teaching a subject, a new beginning. And this is, I opened this, I got hundreds of books like that. I opened this book and that's where I came to and I, I reflect on what happened to me today. In that old truck, I got love gas, man. It'll see a gas there. You, you, you know, it look like you got a flat on that side. They want to turn over there. I didn't pay that gas and no attention to them, man. I got too much money in my pocket. God know how to bless us. Amen. I say God Amen. know how Amen. to bless us. Because I was willing to pay the bills. They were all church bills. It was my money. But the money I got belonged to the church. I, I didn't hear but one amen on the brunt. Everything I got belonged to God's church. I belong to God's church. I am God's church. So somebody wrote a song when I was a boy, you can't be God given. I've tried that over and over and over again. You give him a dollar, Say, if a man passed by you, a soldier will duffel duffer bag and make you carry it one mile, carry it another mile, and when he gets to that second mile, he'll be your friend. We've been teaching a whole lot this last Tuesday. Man, we got to get wrapped it up out of here, man. We look deep into the word, man. Every now and then, God will give you a revelation that will amaze your understanding. Our subject tonight is in twofold. A new beginning. There is life within. And we just got through reading Acts 20 when the young man fell from the third story and killed himself. And Paul went down and raised him up. And now we are in Acts 3. And we're going to read from Acts 3. Our subject is a new beginning. Look at me. I'll show you a new beginning. Look at this. That's a new beginning, right? Next month, I'll be 80. When you get to be 80, life is more precious than when you was 20. Because you know you ain't got a whole bunch left. I used to get them whining balls down south, a round piece of candy, you know. And it costs, you get four or five of them for a penny. And I lived a mile from town, and Grandma sent me to town. I'd get that whining ball, and, and I wouldn't walk fast. I'd suck on a little bit, because it'll go away. <laughs> what God has done, hey, is done, and will do, will never go away. We're in Acts 3. I'm still enjoying last Tuesday. We got to a place where our understanding didn't work. We just turned it over to faith. And that's where the anointing came in. Get your head out of there. Ain't nothing in your head but some foolishness. The scripture don't say I blessed the Lord over my head. Eh? <laughs> Bless the Lord over my what? Soul and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Don't forget all the benefits now. Body, he healed you of all your disease. Soul, he saved you of all your sin. Bless the Lord, soul. We're in Acts 3. Our subject is twofold, a new beginning. And there's life within. Acts 3. 
Now, Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. And a certain man lame from his mother's womb. was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called beautiful, to ask folks for money as they go into the temple. That's not a good reason to be there, to beg for money. Who seen Peter and John about to go into the temple, <clears throat> ask him, now don't underestimate because you've, you've seen this before, there's anointing on everything God wrote. Amen. Amen. Acts 3.3. 3. Who's seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple and ask them for some money? And Peter fastened his eyes upon him with John. Both of them looked on him. Only one spoke, Peter, said, look on us. Look away from what you think you need to a source where you can get what you want. <clears throat> Fourth verse, Acts 3. And Peter fastened his eyes upon him with John. Both of them looked on him. And Peter spoke and said, look on us. Now, <clears throat> the fifth verse in Acts 3. And he gave heed unto them. What's the next word? Expect. expect. That's the way you get your blessing, brother. You don't expect nothing, you ain't going to get nothing. Now, some of you are way down in Acts 30. No, I'm in the fifth verse. Stay with me. Amen. You can do that when you get home. <clears throat> and Peter fastened his eyes upon him with John and looked on him. <clears throat> and he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. You wouldn't think about God. Amen. So when you come up before the congregation for prayer, don't think on the people that's praying for you. You ain't get nothing. We ain't got nothing to give you. So this fellow here, he didn't have a spiritual expectation. He just wants somebody to help him because he was crippled. Fifth verse, fourth verse. And Peter fastened his eyes on him with John and looked on him. Now this is a poor man. You see, the business of the Bible is directed to those that need something from God. And when the people find out that they need something from God, our job is to give them God. Because that's going to be the source of what they need. But they don't know that. Don't assume nothing, preachers. Don't, don't assume nothing. People don't know what you know. Followers don't teach leaders in the holiness church. <laughs> in other churches, they vote him right out of office. Amen. Our subject is a new beginning. There is life within. And we are in Acts 3. And This man was lame. He couldn't walk, couldn't move. He was paralyzed all over. In Jamaica, I told you, 3,000 people sitting in the church. A woman came to church early, brought her husband, laid him on the front seat, laid his head in her lap, making sure she getting him close to the fireplace. You, you, you know the altar is the fireplace. Yeah. Ah! There's heat on the altar, brother. Bishop Wheeler told me, Dr. Wheeler, you want to see a miracle right now, man? I said, yeah, I, I want to see a miracle. Can you sing he touch me, man? Yeah. He said, sing he touch me, man. He said, you don't need a mic. 2,000 people in the church. So you don't need a mic. He went down. Only thing that man could move was the lips. Are you sweetly saved, man? Yes, yeah, sweetly saved, man. He said, get up there. The man jumped up. 
Now, listen, that might not seem like nothing to you, but have you ever put your hand on a piece of petrified wood? It's, it feels like a rock. It's dead. Ain't no life in that thing. That man that got up and ran around that church, man, and forgot his wife and came back and got her, danced all. I say, Jesus, man. See, we, we see this scripture, but we got to put some life in it, man. God work in mysterious ways. What's the rest of that scripture? It's wonders to perform. Man, I go somewhere where there's a poor country. Go to Haiti. Go to Africa. Go to Jamaica. And go to a hole in this church. You know, they got foolishness everywhere. I looked at that man. When you laying down, you're supposed to get up chest first. This man jumped up, he didn't lay stood down. I'm looking at the man. And I done laid my hands on him, he feel like a piece of wood. Petrified wood. Y'all don't know what that you ain't come down, sir. Petrified wood feel like a piece of coal, something hard and lifeless. The man came up like this and foot hit the floor and ran off. I'm looking at the man. And I'm standing there. What? <laughs> you never get accustomed to a miracle. It wouldn't be a miracle if it was just ordinary stuff. I experienced a miracle today. God saved me pretty close to $2,800 of bills I had forgot that I paid. But look at the spirit that I had. I figured I owed them, so it was my responsibility to what? Pay them. It was church bills that wasn't mine, so I went to my account and drew the money out. Now I can put that money right back in there. You, you, you know, that feel good, man, when God surprised you like that. I should have known something was up because in a vision this morning, the man came in with a fist full of money, gave the money to me and turned around and walked away in a vision. And I'm trying to figure that out. And when that lady starts saying, that one is paid. I said, oh, that's the man. I'd be so glad when you get to be my age. Amen, amen, amen. Oh, brother. It's sweet. It's sweet. Man called me today from Baltimore. So his pastor here. Sometimes he try to preach and he fall out. I went in prayer. I rebuked the source of it. I said, Satan, you are a lie in the name of who? Jesus. I said, back off, my brother. And the man that calls, they giving away his, his uh, tennis rack and his bowling ball. You can't give up. Tell you like I told you before, if you're in deep water, you better kick. Amen. Amen. If you don't, you'll die. Huh? Amen. I enjoy deep water. Because I got a lifeguard living in me. You take the word life off, and I got a God. <laughs> huh? He's on my side. Our subject is a new beginning. And the new beginning suggests that second subject. There's life within. And we came out of Acts 20. Now we're in Acts 3. So this is the story of a lame man. Now lame man, you can't do nothing. 
So people had to carry him, pick him up, carry him to the door of the church. Why didn't he carry him in the church? Now that's a big church. A whole lot of folk passed by and said, no. But Peter and that other brother, they were apostles. Now apostles can see what we walk over. An apostle can see your feeling. If you heard, I can pick it up. Somebody called me today. Pastor, pray for me. I got bitten by a spider. And I can't come to church. That's the time to come to church. <clears throat> you, you get where the power away. Don't go to the hospital first. Call for prayer. Get wisdom, get knowledge, and all you're getting, get an understanding. Understanding is this, ain't nothing too hard for God. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to turn this over to God. I did that when I was 60 years old. Next month I'll be 80. So you can't tell me it don't work. I've already taken addresses and phone numbers to cut lines. I'm 80. The, line, the grad don't know how old I am. And I never told the line more. James, my associate pastor, said, well, I'm going to do it with you. Listen, 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 listen. You got to let your life be an example. You're not an island. You're not sitting out there by yourself. Saints and sinners are watching you. They may not say nothing, but they got to have you. If you turn a light on in a dark place, you're going to know that light's on. You can close your eyes and your eyelids look red on top. It's shining right through there. Jesus said, I am the light. Makomo said to her, I am the light. Hey, he did say it. I am the light of the world. If any man come after me, he will not walk in darkness. I will subject again as a new beginning. There's life within. We are in Acts 3. We're talking about a lame man that couldn't move nothing. And the person that carried him there spoke for him. He's outside of the church building. Wanting something to maintain his physiology. Want something to eat. The man didn't know if you love God, you ain't going to lack for nothing. Amen. Now I'm finding that out. Now I know you've heard it a thousand times. You can trust Jesus of what you need. I said, you better trust Jesus of what you need. This might be what you need. But Jesus is who you need. So you surrender yourself to holiness. And holiness demands God's hand. Give it to him. In the name of what? Jesus. His works. I said works. And it makes life work too. Holiness will make the things in this world line up for your benefit. I'm driving a car now 10 years old. It drives just like the day I bought it. That's God. 
Ain't you about no pie in no sky? I'm talking about a car in the parking lot. Sure wish you'd do something about that truck in that game. But, but I was so blessed today, I forgot about that gas hand on that truck, man. I pull it to the filling station, I just fill it up. A blessing, you need to get this, saints. A blessing from God will change your conversation. Huh? You won't boast yourself in the blessing, you'll boast yourself in the blesser. My God shall what? Supply all my needs according to the riches and glory by Christ Jesus. That's a hallelujah kind of a place right there. Yeah. I am there now. Amen. I used to get sick and tired of being the oldest person everywhere I go. No, I'm the blessed person wherever I go because I've been blessed long haul. My mother died at 59. I'm almost 80. The scriptures say because a person sin, they won't live half of their life. Sin will kill you before death gets ready to come. So inside of holiness is life. Life eternal. Come unto me, all you that labor and heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. I am meek. Jesus is talking now. I'm talking about the God of glory. He said, I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest for your inner man whose name is soul. Our subject is a new beginning. There's life within. We're in Acts 3. <clears throat> We're talking about the lame man. Acts 3, 2. And a certain lame man, lame from his Mother's womb, he was born paralyzed, was carried, whom they laid daily, every day, at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask the people for something as they entered into the temple. Now, all the people going in, he didn't pay no attention to these two people, Peter and John. Who seeing Peter and John <clears throat> about to go into the temple, asking for something. And Peter, fastening his eyes up on him with John, both of them looked on him, only one spoke and said, Acts 3, 4, look on us. Now he got the man's attention. Fifth verse. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Acts 3, 6. Then Peter said, what you expect, silver and gold, we don't have none of that. But what you need, we got. But such as I have, hey, give I thee. He fits to take a thought over lameness. Look at the first thing he said in Acts 3, 6. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He called that name first. That's the key to healing. Rise up. And when you stand up, walk. And he took he, and he took him by the hand, the right hand, and lift him up. The man was showing up lame. He couldn't, he couldn't obey the command. So Peter helped him spiritually and physically. And 
Peter lift him up, helped him to obey the command that came from God, and immediately, right away, his feet and ankle bones received strength. Peter spoke the word. This is a sinner. He didn't know how to obey the word. So Peter caught him by the hand and helped him obey the word. Are you listening to me? Amen. That's why you get the power laying on a hand, brother. It ain't nothing new. It ain't nothing to be entertained with. Peter told the lame man that couldn't move nothing. Hey, come up. Oh, Saddam, I said to him. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Look at Acts 3 7. And Peter took him by the right hand. And help him to obey the command. And immediately, right away, listen to me, after Peter touched him, he didn't move because of Peter's words. He moved because Peter became the power behind the word. Seven verse, Acts 3. And he took him by the right hand, look, and lift him up. The man didn't get up. Peter lift him up. And would he what, what is the first, the last word in Acts 6? Rise up. He couldn't do that. Peter helped him to rise up. Then faith took a hold. Uh -huh. <laughs> Do you see that? Uh -huh. Help us one what? Of another. Don't run over this book, preachers. Amen. Don't run over this book. It ain't big enough. It big enough. It was this book that sent that man into my sleep this morning with a fistful of money when I thought I owed $3,500. I saw the man. I took the money out of his hand, went back to sleep. And I'm trying to figure out. You know, if you try, <laughs> you'll never get to sleep laying there trying to figure out. Huh? It ain't for your head, it's for your heart. The only one that people got on their computer, that bill is paid. That bill is paid. I come and think, oh, that's the money the man brought. I was the man, I paid it. But I forgot. And God was telling me, see, God don't always tell you all about everything. Amen. He gives you a little seed. Huh? Yep. Now, I ain't going to never forget that no more. I might forget something else, but I ain't going to forget that. God working Miss T.B. Como shut her head. God work in mysterious ways. Amen. His wonders to perform. He's still doing this. I received my wonder today. Amen. Amen. So I'm putting twenty five hundred dollars back in my account that I thought I owed. The head ain't about nothing. Lord. And that man brought me that money and that vision this morning. He didn't say nothing. He just put the money in my hand and walked away. And I'm laying there. What does this mean? But when that man kept saying, pay, pay, I said, oh, thank you, whoever you were. <laughs> God will send you help. I said, God will send you help. Amen. Yes, he'll send you help. 
Then when I went to pay it, I had nine bills there. And they had a line behind me, and the lady kept looking at the line. I said, just two, I said, just do two or three, and I'll get back in the line. So I kept getting back in the line. Every time I come back, that was, I said, I'll get back in the line. Huh? Because the people is getting upset because the woman is helping me. And that's not my job to let folk get irritated because I'm being blessed. So I get back in the line like everybody. You can't beat God given. You, you know what I say? You can't beat God. But you got to be patient. When I left that, my foot wouldn't even hit the ground. I said, Jesus. And people looking at me. See, <laughs> when you get pad to knock me, slew foot blessed, your face changes. They can see it. I'm on my way to car. Oh, I was like 20 years old. I got in that car and rolled them windows up and cut that video off. Right there in the park. I said, I ain't moving until I give God some praises for what he done. Now, see, we're not smart enough to know all the things that God is doing for us right now. So we should be praising every second. Every time you take a breath. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I, thank, I praise you and I give you glory. He's worthy. He's worthy. Oh, I'm asleep. Man came in my bedroom this morning. Didn't say nothing. Had a fist full of hundred dollar bill and put him in my hand. And I woke up. I'm looking for that body. Hey. Huh? God work in this team of Como Sataha. He don't deal with the flesh. He deal with against the flesh for the spirit. And God did that for me that I had forgotten that he had done. Now, if you keep on being blessed, you ain't gonna remember all them blessings. Amen. But you ain't gonna forget the blesser neither. But, but you, you can't, you can't file cabinet all of them. Huh? I forgot, baby. I forgot. And, and, and when I got the money in my sleep, I couldn't relate it to nothing but God is being good to me. So I woke up looking for the money. Because that's what head do. They, they look for natural things. Your head ain't, your head ain't nothing but a joke. And when I went down there, I had nine bills that paid that paid he said mister see all those people in that line will you get out I said yes ma'am I'll get I don't just keep on I'll get in that line ten times hey it's paid I'm talking about hundreds two three hundred five six hundred dollars I'm talking about so I went down there with over thirty five hundred dollars only had to pay four hundred and something dollars now you didn't look at him I left there, I said, Lord, don't let me get a ticket. I said, don't let me get a ticket because I'm finna to drive the truck. Hey, <laughs> 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 glory to God. Hey, so I got to get on the right side over there. Let everybody go on by, you know. Because the devil, when you get blessed, he wants to curse you. Amen, amen, amen. But one thing I find out, preacher, he can't turn a blessing to a curse. He can't undo what God did. Amen. So I'm going home. Free at last. <laughs> I'm crying and wiping my tears. I praise God. Free at last. Thank God Almighty. I ain't slept now weeks in. Now I wink. I... God's been good to me. You need to say me too. Because right now he is doing things so you don't you don't know what he's doing. I got a car with 136,000 miles on it. Run like it don't have 10 miles on it. That's God, saints. Ain't no rust nowhere, man. And, and, and when the 
as soon as it come out bright enough, I'm going to hit it south somewhere. I mean, I'll throw my wife in the back seat and take off. She, is, she stay awake about 20 minutes, maybe to get this outside. And she become a musician. I said, thank you. And the Lord said, what you thanking me for? I said, this is my wife. I said, this is my wife. And this is the only woman I want. See, there's a lot of stuff we can thank God for, man. Man, there might no pie in those sky. God don't cook pies. I was sitting here a new beginning. This young man here in Acts 3 had a new beginning. He was lame, couldn't move nothing but his lips. He was set at the door of the church. Acts 3 said every day they brought him. Now, if he had been receiving the right thing, he don't have to come there once. Then he's going to inside next time. Amen. Acts 3, 4, and Peter fastened his eyes upon him with John and said, give us your attention. And he gave heed to them. Here's the key word, saints. In Acts 3, 5, expecting to receive something of them. You can pray till your hair get long enough to walk on. If you don't pray, if you don't pray with faith at the seed of expectation, you ain't gonna get nothing. And he gave heed in the fifth verse. There's the key word, expecting to receive something. Here's the error of them. He expected for Peter and, and, and John to give him give them something. But he did have the spirit of expectation. So the responsibility of the preacher is to change the direction of the expectation. From me to my God. Because I can't make you walk. But I know somebody that can, because he made those crippled legs, but he didn't make them crippled. Sixth verse, Acts 3. And he gave heed to them, expecting. That's a key word right there. Expecting to receive something. Wrong words, of them. So Peter straightened out in Acts 3, 6. Peter said unto him, Silver and gold that you want. I don't have none of that. But, tell you what I do have. Such as I have, give I thee. Now, this is the secret. He gave the man the ability to walk. Because he says, such as I have, give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. So Peter gave him the source of the ability to walk and then helped him to walk into that. And he took him by the right hand. Acts 3, 7. Now the man still wasn't able to help Peter. But Peter lift him up. It's hard. He's a lame man, 150, 200 pounds. Can't move nothing. Look at the miracle now. Begin with a miracle. Peter just caught him by the right hand and lift him up. There's a miracle there. You, you can't lift up 200 pounds like that and stand him on his feet. God is using us, man. He's using us. He empowered the preacher to carry out the blessing. Oh. We are workers together with God. We help God perform miracles that men is welcome to receive. The man that have no ability, he could move nothing 
But right here in Acts 3, the sixth verse, then Peter said, silver and gold have I none. I ain't got nothing like money. But I have something better than money. And if you receive this, you'll be able to go and work and make your own money. But such as I have, give I thee. Look at the first thing he said he got. Jesus Christ. By the authority in the name of Jesus Christ, not by the authority in me. In the name of In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. You go to Mexico, every other street you see four or five Christ's walking the street. Jesus is. The man that come here from up the middle, and his name is Jesus or Jesus or something. But Peter give a direction and a place of Jesus in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. That one. Here's the command. Rise up. Step one. Now, walk. Man couldn't rise up. So there's a scripture where it help us one of a what? One of another. Miracles won't work without you and God. God will use you to help him do what he died to do. We'll help us one of another. Rise up and walk. Now look how Peter walked through it for him. And Peter took him by his right hand. Because he got to stand up to walk, otherwise you're going to crawl. So Peter walked into the command with him. Rise up and walk. And Peter took him by the right hand and lift him up. And immediately he did the other part by himself. Got to meet Jesus halfway. We're his servants. We are. We, we so when a whole hell break loose, I said, the will of God be done. And I'm done with it. Trouble don't keep me awake no more. Amen. And Peter took him by the right hand and lift him up. Acts 3, 7. Look. And right away, immediately, after Peter help him to stand on his feet, his feet and ankle bone receive strength from God after Peter obeyed God. We work us together with God. See how, see how warm you are here? You never thought that this gas bill last month was $1,600. I can tell that by the tuition you pay. <laughs> Grunt or something. You can say amen to the truth. Amen. Say amen. amen. When Jane would live, he always say, dang. <laughs> You're about four years old. Dang. Yeah. Truth. Don't hurt saints. Amen. Truth strengthen saints. Mm -hmm. Truth make saints free. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. So I went down the other day and instead of sixteen hundred, what was twelve hundred? I forgot I had paid four on it. So I put a thousand dollars on it. Now I only owe about two forty. You know you had to pay your bills. Mm -hmm. Amen. If you drove your car here, it must have gas in it. Because mm -hmm. ain't nobody driving no scooter out there. Amen. Amen. And scooter takes power too. Mm -hmm. Called leg power. 
Our service begins a new beginning. We in Acts 3. And the 8th, the 7th verse says, and he, and he took him by the right hand, Peter took him by the right hand, and helped him to obey him when he said, get up. Now you see that man there, he's taller than me. If he laying down and can't move nothing, if I catch him by the right hand, that's a miracle. I got to lift that man all the way up with one hand like that. Nothing is too hard. My heart say, come on, shot. Nothing is too hard. For God, our subject is a new beginning, a sub subject. There's a life within. There was a life within that man. Mm -hmm. And when God spoke to Peter, Peter activated that life. Yeah. Amen. But he had to obey God. That's something you have to do other than speak. And sometimes God can do it without you, you know. Yeah. That's right. yeah. In Jamaica, two, three thousand people like that. Raise my hand, everybody fall out. Now, you need to go. Amen. And when you think you're something, you just fall. Amen. To God be what? Lord. Hey, to God be. In Acts 3, we are teaching not the story of a lame man, but the life of a lame man. He didn't think he'd ever walk because he didn't have no faith. But he had faith in God's people. Amen. He didn't go to no pool hall, no gambling joint and sit out there. He came to the church to receive what he physically need from the people. And the Holy Ghost sent two ministers, Peter and John, to give to him not what he was expecting but what he needed. Because every time the church door opened, the Bible said he was there. But he received what he wanted because he was still physically alive. <clears throat> but the Lord wanted to give him something so he would not stop outside the church <clears throat> but come in the church Amen. and thank God for what God did outside the church. Amen. He's still doing that, man. He's still doing that. He's still doing that, man. Our subject again is a new beginning. There's life within. Therefore, if any man be in Christ Jesus, Talk to me. He's a new creature. Old things. Now, when my body starts acting like it's 80, that's a new thing. So I use the old thing whose name is faith. To alleviate this new thing and try to introduce itself to this 80 year old temple of God. Moses lived a long time. Abraham lived longer than Moses. Neither one of them ever got sick. Amen. Amen. Now, 
I know the Bible is true. Because the Bible says Jesus Christ is same yesterday, today, and forevermore. So at 80, I've already tuned up my lawnmowers and changed the oil. I'm waiting for the snow to go away. And my son's only 42 or 43. He know I don't have to cut grass to make money. The union and General Motors take good care of me. And my wife, I don't never know what my wife make. She act like she don't make nothing. <laughs> she act like she didn't ever work at Jill Moe. I say to myself, hell, bless her here now. Well, I'm the husband man. And the Bible said, you, you got to be careful how you treat your wife. You treat your wife the way you want God to treat you. And my Bible said, my God shall supply what? Oh, oh so if I'm going to act like God, I got to supply all of my wife's what? Needs. Needs. I ain't never seen one of her checks. And we've been married close to 30 years. That's her money. She's my responsibility. Say amen, some of y'all. Amen. amen. Now she's getting ready to go to Atlanta someplace. She don't know I'm going to just put two, three hundred dollars in a in a purse, and then I'm going to tell her uh, if you don't need it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, bring it back. Now I'll never see that money again. Amen. Amen. No, sir. <laughs> Mm -hmm. My granddaughter lived in a house, my house in front of me. Wanted to go to Alabama someplace, take her babies down there and rent a house. And she called me last night, Papa. I said, Oh, here you go. It ain't working down here. I started to tell her, I could have told you that before you left. If you got a source of good, don't go somewhere else. Amen. Her baby's crying, my wife right across the street, just like that. When she left, I said, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> she ain't been gone but a month. <laughs> Whenever we think that we can make it without Jesus, we're going to have a hard road to hoe. Y'all don't know what that is. Paulette, they know about that. You, 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 yeah, you're getting that grass. And then you can break the hand off of your hoe trying to get that root of that seed. That, Huh? No one that person wrote that song, I know the law will make a way. Uh, and down south, people think you rest when it rains. No, you don't. <laughs> when it rains, that grass going to grow, brother. And soon as it stops raining, Go pull up some weed, boy. I give to them hogs. I say, I hate them hogs. I'm going to eat every one I can get a hold of. <clears throat> but they taught me how to work. Waking out of friends. And my job is taking care of me now after being retired close to 30 years. My job is still taking care of me. God did that. Amen. People think the union did it. No, sir. Amen. No, sir. God did it. Every good and perfect gift. 
<laughs> ah, come down from the Father of light, and there's no rebels or shadows of turning. God is still taking good care of me. And if I die, half of my union money going to go to my wife. Amen. Ain't, ain't that something? That's God. Amen. That's God, man. And then he gave me one of the best jobs in there, electricians. And I worked that job, and I still don't know how to change a light bulb. <laughs> and I was making more money than any electrician in the shop because I worked every day. I said, Lord, you gave me this job, and I'm a worker. Didn't, didn't know nowhere what I'm going to do when I get there. Press break down, and they called the little crib where the electrician. Wheeler! When I leave that crib, I have my little belt on. I said, Lord, boy, <laughs> help me. I get to have with that. It's okay, Reverend. God fixed it. I say, I love me some Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. I love me some Jesus. And for 20 or 25 years, the plant manager gave me a prayer room upstairs. And I don't care what break down at, at 7 o'clock, he'll put somebody else on it. And I go up there, I had 25 or 30 students every night for 25 or 30 years. Amen. That prayer room is still going right now. Amen. <laughs> but if you're going to receive from God, he got to be your God. You can't cast the pearls to the swine, to the hogs. You, you know that a swine is a hog. It, a swine is a yoink. <laughs> Our subject is a new beginning. There's life within. I'm too happy to be sad. I'm in Acts 3. And we see this lame man. Somebody had to bring him to the church and Leave him there. He'd beg. They still doing that. They ain't lame. People walking here half my age asking for money. It took me years to learn how to say, I ain't giving you nothing. It took me years to learn how to say that. But my son, when he see him coming, he shake his head and go to the pulpit. <laughs> because you see, he's my son, and I made sure he never need nothing. So he don't know how to feel that need. I took it away from him. You see what I'm saying? So be careful because if you take that away, you steal a little bit of mercy from him. Because he had to feel it. I, I know the person lying. I know he's going to go out and buy some beer with that money or something. Go, go play a number, get some drugs or something. But when he asks, it still pricks my heart. Either because he need it and going to use it right, or don't need it and going to use it wrong. The word need stands out. If you've ever been there, I came here sleeping in empty houses. I know what I'm talking about. And if you do that long enough, you'll get to hold some compassion. And when you see another person in need, your heart will go out, brother. Whether he's a saint or a sinner, it will go out. How come you've been there? Hey. And come by. I'll show you a snow for $30. As if you find out any snow out there that belong to me, <laughs> go for it. Oh, Red, I said, that ain't none of my snow. <laughs> what about 20? I said, still ain't my snow. What about 10? I said, I don't care if you get down to one penny. That snow don't belong to me. 
And I'm not going to pay you to move somebody else's snow. He go, oh, man. So he comes to the back door. Now he don't bother to come in. If he don't see me, he see Jane, he leave. <laughs> <laughs> he come there looking for Ram, you know what I'm saying? The devil is smart. Amen, amen. He will use you, then misuse you. And when you save and sanctify, it's always a hill to climb to say no to anybody that asks you for something. Amen, amen, amen. Because you have the heart of God. See, this man here in Acts 3, they didn't drive him away from the church. He came there for years. Every time they have a meeting, he was there begging for some physical help. And Peter and John been passing by this man for years. But this day, the Holy Ghost said, pull aside here. Give this man who he need. Did you get that? But the man came now to get what he needed. And what he needed was something to take care of his physiology. Who he need will give him an ability to take care of himself. Amen. We're in Acts 3. And we're going to go slow. Acts 3, 5. And he gave heed unto Peter, expecting, there's the secret there, saints. If you can pray and don't have no expectation, you ain't going to never get nothing. Amen. Now this man had a spirit of expectation, expecting to receive something. But Peter said, what you expect me to give you, we don't have no silver, no gold. But such as I have, I have the gift of the healer. Give I thee. Look at this now and understand this Acts 3 and 6. The first thing he said, I don't have what you want. I have who you need that will give you ability to get what you want. Because the scripture said a man should earn his living, not beg for it. By the sweat of his face. So in Acts 3 and 5. Then 3 and 6. Then Peter said. Silver and gold. Have I none. I ain't got no money. I don't have what you want. But I have who you need. But such as I have. Give I thee. By the authority in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Get up and walk. That's what the man needed. He needed to be able to get up and walk so he can make his own living. But he wasn't able to do that first part. So Acts 3, 7 said Peter took him by the right hand. And I'm telling you, that's a miracle. Amen. To lift up a 200-pound man with one hand to the, so he stand up on his feet, that's a miracle there. Amen. Amen. 
And Peter lift him up. And as soon as Peter helped him to obey what God told him to do, immediately, look where the miracle started at. His feet, his ankle bone, received strength. So if you're going to pray a prayer of deliverance, you're going to have to be a part of that deliverance. And he leaping up, stood, he jumped up, and he just stood there, and walked. Acts 3, look at the first thing he did. And in it with them into the temple, where he should have been in the first place. But healing just ain't in the temple. It's in the saints, the temple of God. Amen. He went with them in the temple, walking. What's the next word? Leaping. What's the next word? And praising God. He's going to try to give Peter and John some glory. They're going to straighten them out on that. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. Walking and what? Praising God. Now, do you see what the purpose of a miracle is? Amen. To cause people to what? Praise God. Not man. Whew. I like that. Acts 3, 9. And all the people saw him walking that could walk and praising God that he did not know. And they knew that it was he which sat for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. Why didn't they pray for him? God didn't put it on their heart to do it. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at that which had happened unto him. And as a lame man, Acts 3, 11, and as a lame man which was healed, notice Peter and John, all the people ran together unto them in the porch, which is called Solomon's, Greatly wondering, what happened here? Acts 3, 12. And when Peter saw it, see, anything that God do, men going to try to put some glory on a man for doing it. You only have the gift of anything if the giver of that anything give it to you. You can do nothing of yourself, nothing. Acts 3, 12. And when Peter saw it, he answered to the people, You men of Israel, why marvel you at this? Or why look you so earnestly on us as though by our own power of holiness we made this man walk? What is the matter with you? You see, Peter ain't taking no glory. I said, Peter ain't taking no glory. We got a statement to God be what? <laughs> you hear, but sometimes folk don't act like that. Mm -hmm. Acts 3.13. Peter's going to go way back and make sure they take their eyes over them and put it on God. <laughs> Acts 3.13. The God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob. The God of our fathers. Look, look had glorified his son Jesus by making this man walk. Whom you delivered up and denied him in the presence of Pilate, which was the children to let him go. But you denied the Holy One and the just 
and desire to murder the robbers to be granted unto you. Look at this statement in Acts 3.15. And killed. Oh God. Oh God. And killed the prince of life whom God had raised up from the dead whereof we are witnesses and his name through faith in his name had made this man strong. Not just in his name, but faith in his name. That makes this man strong, whom you see and know. Yea, the faith which is by him had given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. If a miracle is done, the glory is supposed to go to God. I say, if any miracle is done, the glory must go to God. Now, in Acts, this man act like he was saved. And he saw the brother laying hand on the sick and they're being healed. And he asked him, offer them money. I'll give you this money if you give me that power to heal. That's right. That's right. Sure, yeah. Peter said, I perceive that the love of God is not in you. You better pray so you won't burn. He told him, you pray for me. I got faith in my prayer because I just messed up. So the saints can pray for the sinners. And whenever a miracle is being performed, if we're not careful, flesh would reach for the glory. Amen. So we pin a simple statement to God, what? Glory. Be the glory. Amen. 16 verse in Acts 3, our subject is a new beginning. That's life within. 16 Verse in Acts 3. And his name, through faith in the name of Jesus, had made this man strong. You have faith in the name of Jesus and be willing to give him all the glory and he will let you represent his power. He don't need you. I said, God don't need you. Whom you see and know, yea, the faith which is by him had given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. And now, brethren, I know that through ignorance you did it, as did also your rulers. But those things which God before had showed by the mouth of all his prophets, that Christ should suffer, he had so fulfilled. Repent ye therefore, and be converted, that your sin might be blotted out. When the time of refreshment come, shall come from the presence of the Lord, and he shall send Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you, whom the heaven must receive until the time of restitution of all things, which God has spoken by the mouth of all of his holy prophets since the world began. For Moses truly said unto the Father, a prophet. Moses saw Jesus, called him a prophet. A prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren like unto me, him shall you hear in all things whatsoever he shall say unto you. And it shall come to pass that every soul, you need to get this boy, Acts 3.23, and every soul which will not hear that prophet shall be destroyed from among the people. Yea, and all the prophets from Samuel Bible that says Samuel was the first prophet. 
and those that follow after, as many as have spoken, have likewise foretold of these things. Yea, you are the children of the prophets and of the covenants which God made with our fathers, saying unto Abraham, that's where the covenant started. And in your seed shall all the kindred of the earth be blessed. Unto you first God, having raised up his son Jesus, sent him to bless you. And turning away every one of you from his iniquity. That's what Jesus came for. Amen. Caused him his death. He had to go to hell. But my Bible tell me in three days he came up out of hell. Amen. He did come up. Amen. I said he did come up. Amen. He come up bragging all power. <laughs> Didn't say nothing about hell. And heaven and earth, he took care of the power of hell. What was it in his hand? Nail print? All power of heaven and earth is in my hand. I purchased that power by these nail prints you see in my hand. I bought your salvation, your mind. Glory to God. Isaiah 40. I don't concern myself anymore with preparing a message because the messenger lives within my heart. Isaiah 40. Comfort ye. Look how he repeated. Isaiah 40. This is a command. It's not a request. Comfort ye. Comfort ye my people. Said your God. Speak you comfortably to Jerusalem and cry unto her that her warfare is accomplished. Now, we are God's people. Amen. Our warfare has been won. Amen. Jesus won it and gave us the victory. Amen. Cry to her that her iniquity is pardoned. For she had received of the Lord's hand double for all her sin. You sin, God coming with punishment. The voice of him that cried in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be exalted. Straight, smooth, narrow, because enemies out there. So make straight the way, move all the trees, take up all the valleys, bring down the mountain so the saints can see. You see what I'm saying? What do you think it means he made a way? This is it. When thieves break in the folk house, they don't normally do it when they're there. They don't normally do it in the daytime. They do it in the night time. Every valley, that low down place. Now if there's a valley, there's a hill there. Or you wouldn't have a valley. And the enemy will attack from that hill that that valley is at the, knee, at the back base of it. He hides himself among stuff. But God has given us eyes that we might see and ears that we might hear and mouth that we might speak. Say them back off now. 
He didn't move in the name. In the name of Jesus. I just heard. We have power. Amen. We have power. And that power is for one another and against the devil. Amen. We don't have power against one another. Isaiah 40, our subject gives a new beginning. There is life within. Isaiah 40 and 4, every valley shall be exalted. Going to bring that low place up to plain, level to plain. And every mountain should be made low. Now you got a flat, straight road. Devil ain't got no place to hide. It's called holiness. Devil can't hide. Amen. He can only hide in hellish folks. Mm -hmm. I, I do believe that's a difference. Yeah. And the crooked, see, the enemy stand around that corner. And Poppy went, he, he getting everything that the devil can hide in out of your way. So what is he doing? He moving all lying excuses. I would come to church, but my dog is sick. I would come to church, but my old man ain't come home yet. He ain't your old man. Look at you how quiet you are. If he's somewhere else with somebody else, he don't belong to you. He's he trying to sop up smelled milk. Get you another cup. Say it on somebody. Amen. Amen. I'm teaching now, boy. Yeah, I'm teaching now. I'm touching myself now. Isaiah 4 and 4. Every valley shall be exalted. So there's no hill now. Every mountain and hill shall be made low. And the crooked shall be made straight. And the rough places plain. It's called the straight and the narrow. Jesus did that. And the glory of the Lord hey, shall be revealed and all flesh shall see it together for the mouth of the Lord had spoken it. So God is moving all excuses for us living unholy. Isaiah 14, 6. The voice said, cry. And he said, what shall I cry? He said, cry. All flesh is glass. And all the goodness thereof it has the flower that faded. The grass withered. The flower faded. Because the spirit of the Lord blew upon it. Surely the people is grass. The grass withered and the flower faded. Look at it now. But the word of our God, you sure need to get that. Isaiah 40 and 8. The grass withered, the flower faded, but the word of our God shall stand how long? Forever. Now, now think of that when all hell breaks loose. The word ain't going nowhere. When all hell break loose around and don't break loose in my life, I got to pray, I pray, just four words. Lord, I thank you. And I'm, I'm through with it. Trouble don't keep me awake no more. My blessings keep me awake. I'm forced to say it. I had close to $4,000 worth of bills to pay today. 
I went down there and checked all them bills, all of them were paid but one. Amen. And that bill wasn't my $450. Amen. Amen. If they didn't have that glass, I'd have gone back there and kissed that woman. Now you need to get this and stop just quoting it like Shakespeare wrote it. My God, hey, my heart said to her, shall supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. So the only thing we need is Jesus. He's God's warehouse. Come on here. He is full of God. So if Jesus is in you, you are full of God. Amen. And anybody that's full of God is full of good. Let me come on. Say it in my heart. Eight verse in Isaiah 40. The grass wither it. The flower of the grass fade. But the word of our God shall stand how long? Forever. Forever. O Zion that bringeth good tidings, get ye up into the high mountain, O Jerusalem, that bringeth good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, lift it up. Be not afraid. God didn't give you a spirit of fear. That's a lie. Say unto the cities of Judah, Behold your God. Behold the Lord God will come with strong hand, and his arm shall rule forever. Behold, his reward is with him, and his work before him. He shall feed the flock like a shepherd. Isn't there a scripture that say, God is our shepherd, I shall not want? We are the sheep. The shepherd's responsibility is give the sheep water. That's right. Give the sheep food mm -hmm. and protect the sheep as he lead them. Mm -hmm. That's the job of a shepherd. Mm -hmm. He shall feed his flock like a shepherd. He shall gather the lambs with his arm, Isaiah 14 and 11, and carry them in his bosom. And shall gently lead those that are with young. Who had measured the waters in the hollow of his hand? And meted out heaven with a span. And comfort him the dust of the earth in a measure. And weighed the mountain in scales and the hills in balance. If you can do all that, then you can tell me how good God is. Who had directed the spirit of the Lord or being his counselor taught him? Some people pray and you think they're giving God orders. With whom took he counsel and who instructed him and taught him in the path of judgment and taught him knowledge and showed to him the way of understanding? Who, who did this to God? Did you teach God all of this? They were boasting themselves. Fifteen verse, Isaiah 40. Behold, the nation are as drops of a bucket and are counted as the small dust of the balance. 
Behold, he took up the owls as a very little thing. In Lebanon, it's not sufficient to burn, nor the beast thereof sufficient for a burnt offering. All nations before him are as nothing. I'm talking about all nations on the earth. Amen. Before God, there ain't nothing. Amen. Good God. That's what I tell me. I think God said he said he's big there. And they are coming to him less than nothing and less than vanity. To whom then will you liken God or what likeness will you compare to him? The workman method of the graven image? Witchcraft. Trying to make witchcraft stuff be God. And the goldsmith spreaded it over with gold and cast silver chains. He that is so impoverished that he had no oblation chooses a tree. There's your Christmas tree. Keep on buying nine too with your hell itself. As Isaiah 40 and 20. He had no oblation chooses a tree that will not rot. He seeketh unto him a cunning workman to prepare a graven image. A false god. That's what a Christmas tree is, you know. How come we can come in Thanksgiving tree or something that should not be moved? Have you not known? Have you not heard? Had it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundation of the world? It is he that sitteth upon the circles of the earth. And the inhabitants thereof are as grasshoppers. That's what men look like to God. Mm. You, you know, we need to pray, boy. Amen. So we can turn from grasshoppers to sons of God. Amen. If we stop buying to that idol, they stretch out the heavens as a curtain and spread them out as a tent to dwell in, that bringeth the princes to nothing. He maketh the judges of the earth as vanity. Yea, they should not be planted. Yea, they should not be sown. Yea, the stock should not take root in the earth. And he should also blow upon them. And they should wither. Hey, as the whirlwind shall take them away as stubble. Oh to whom then will you liken me? Or shall I be equal? Said the Holy One. Lift up your eyes on high. And behold who had created these things. That bring it out their hosts by number. He called them all by name. By greatness of his might. For that he is strong in power, not one faileth. Why say it you, O Jacob, and speak it, O Israel, my way is high here from the Lord, and my judgment is passed over from my God? Have you not known? Have you not heard? That the everlasting God, the Lord, the generated, the greater, the creator of the end of the earth fainted not, not he is weary. There's no such in of his understanding. He give it power. To the faint. And to them that have no might, he increased strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary. And the young men shall utterly fail, fall. 
But they, look at that, Isaiah 40, 31. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings as eagles. Yes, in the book. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. But that's my God talking right there. I said, that's my God talking there. Glory to God. Glory to God. Have you noticed in the last two sessions we've just hit some gold nuggets up in here? Other ministers radiating out of this ministry because we don't have but one ministry. Dr. Michael Kernan, Rise and Shine Ministries, Channel 17, Friday from 4.30 to 5.30. Dr. Michael Kernan, Rise and Shine Ministries on Channel 17, <coughs> Friday from 4.30 to 5.30. The Word of God Ministry with Dr. Paulette Simpson on Channel 17, 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. Dr. Paulette Simpson and the ministry of the full gospel Christian church these are all ministers of the church of the living God television ministers coming out of the full gospel Christian church on channel 17 Sunday from 8 to 10 a.m. Monday from 10 a.m. to 12 noon Wednesday from 12 noon to 2 p.m. Wednesday from 9 to 11 p.m. Thursday from 12.30 to 1.30. Saturday from 1 to 2 p.m. And Saturday again from 7 to 8 p.m. When you learn to learn that others may learn, then you know. <laughs>